In today's video, we're going to cover the Acasis 4-Bay SSD Drive Enclosure. If you want to find out more about this device, stick around for the rest of this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Full disclosure, Acasis did send me this device free of charge for testing. They haven't paid for or influenced this video in any way, and all the thoughts, results, and opinions are my own. You'll be seeing this video for the first time, just as you are. Inside the box, you get the power cord, drive spacers, thermal pads, an instruction booklet, a Thunderbolt cable, the power brick, and the device itself. Looking at the back of the device, you get the power input, a Thunderbolt pass-through, and the Thunderbolt host connection. On the bottom side, you get the two rubber feet, as this device is actually meant to be stored vertically. Looking at the front of the unit, you get the power drive light, four SSD lights, and a power switch so you can turn the device on and off. Looking at the top of the device, you can see the opening that's used by the fan for airflow. This device is equipped with an active cooler, and we'll talk more about this later in the video. Pulling from either corner of the cover allows you to remove the cover and expose the connections for the NVMe drives. There isn't much on the inside of the unit other than the four NVMe connectors, and the pins that are used to power the fan in the top cover. This is almost the identical design that was used in their two drive version that I tested last year. Looking at the top of the device, you can see a pretty hefty heat sink, and at the corner you can see the contacts that allow the power to be transferred between the base and the cover. Overall, the thing is really well built and constructed, and the heat sink itself is pretty hefty. Let's go ahead and mount a couple of drives and see how everything goes together and then we can run some benchmarks. Mounting the drives is pretty easy and straightforward. Just remove the plastic cover on the thermal pads and apply it to the NVMe drive. As the thermal pad has plastic on both sides, after you mount it on the drive, make sure you remove the top plastic as well so that it can transfer heat properly to the heat sink. And then using the rubber inserts, just push it in to lock down the drive. It's pretty easy and quick to mount drives. However, you'll have to be careful when removing the lid if you want to add more drives later as it has a tendency to pop out the drives that are actually already mounted as these rubber clips do not hold the drives in very tightly when they're attached to the heat sink. When you're done just simply snap the top back in place. Make sure you check for proper orientation otherwise the fan won't get any power to it and it won't turn on. Before we get into some benchmarking I did want to get some sound level measurements. I'm always a little nervous when any device has fans especially one that's going to be attached directly to my computer and sit pretty close to me. I took a baseline measurement so that I can see the ambient noise levels in my office. And as you can see from the readings, my ambient sound levels around 31 to 32 dBs without the device running. Turning on the device, the sound levels go up to 44 to 46, which is actually a little loud for my taste. Depending on your environment, it may not bother you or if the device is located away from you or possibly underneath a desk or on a shelf, you may not have an issue with the fan noise. But for me, I'm very susceptible to noise that's close by to me, especially when I record my audio. On the upside, the fan itself doesn't whine or have a high-pitched sound. It has a nice natural airflow. And at first, when I plugged it in, I thought it would be okay. But after about 5 or 10 minutes, it began to bother me. It's not super loud, but you'll have to see for yourself if this bothers you. As a side note, I did temporarily disable the fan as I had done with the two drive device. However, this changes the heat dissipation drastically, and I wouldn't recommend doing this, especially if you have four drives in it. So now that we covered the hardware, let's get into testing the device. I ran the benchmark several different ways, starting with single drive performance, configuring the device using Mac OS as two separate drives. And as you can see from the performance, either drive is pretty decent. However, it's not quite as fast as a single drive NVMe enclosure. Next, I tested the RAID 0, RAID 1, and JBOD. As you can see from the results, RAID 0 performance didn't increase very much, and the write performance actually went down a little bit. In the RAID 1 configuration, had similar performance, but it suffered a 50% hit in the write performance. The JBOD performed as expected matching the single drive performance. This is certainly not what I hoped for and it performed very similar to the two drive version that I tested last year. 
So what do I think of the device, and is it right for you? The device itself is extremely well built with a heavy-duty heat sink and excellent overall construction. The only minor complaint with the physical unit was the drive mounting and the possibility of the drives popping out, but only when you remove the top cover. This is not something that you do all the time, but I did want to point that out, as you could easily have been prevented with a slightly more robust mounting system. As for the performance, the performance is on par with the two-drive device that I tested last year and didn't really benefit much from the RAID controller other than increasing your storage capacity and creating some redundancy. The device doesn't come close to actually saturating the Thunderbolt bus and actually performs slower than many single-drive devices that can reach well over 3,000 megabytes per second. That said, the ability to combine up to four SSDs to your system can be really useful and if you need data security, the ability to create at least one RAID 1 configuration for your data is a really, really great feature. As for the fan noise, you'll have to decide for yourself if you're comfortable with the level of noise that's in the device. For many people, this won't be an issue. For me, I thought it was a little bit loud. It would have been great to see like a speed switch to at least be able to lower the, the RPMs of the fan, understanding that you have to balance the amount of heat dissipation with the airflow. Again, I did want to thank Acasis for sending me this device and allowing me to test it. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Please post your questions in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video.